gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Miss Brienne, and welcome back to our Let's Get Ready series. And this is the series that's designed for young children in grades preschool all the way to third grade in order to learn those important skills that you need in order to do, in order to enjoy school. Now you'll learn a variety of skills such as reading, print awareness, uh, phonics, vocabulary, handwriting, all that cool stuff. And this series is for our first grade students who are going to be entering second grade in order to learn those skills you need for second grade as well as second graders, well students who are already in second grade, for them to refresh what they already learned. And I got a fun little game for you to play today. But before we do that, we're going to be reading two different books. Now we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to start with a wordless picture book today, which is Pancakes for Breakfast. Just to give everybody a little break from reading the words in the book. And it is fun when you make up the story as you look at the pictures. <laughs> Followed by a simple, uh, easy reader book, Bath Time for Biscuit. So like I said, we're going to have a little break from trying to read words and maybe just tell a story as we see it in the pictures, just for a little bit of fun. But our first story today is Pancakes for Breakfast. All right, Pancakes for Breakfast. The author and illustrator of this book is Tommy DePala. Now, the author is the person who writes the words of the story. And the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures of the story. And Tommy DePala did both. And then we have the publisher, which is that company that puts the books together into print and sends them to the bookstores to sell. And the publisher here is Harcourt Inc. So with that being said, are we ready to begin? All right, let's take a look at the first picture. It looks like it's a nice early winter morning with the snow on the ground. It's probably cold, right? Probably a nice pleasant morning to wake up to, huh boys and girls? So, let's see what happens. So, it looks like a lady is waking up for to start her day. Now boys and girls, would you go to sleep in the morning? No, you go to sleep at night when it's dark outside. The morning's the time for waking up. And what meal do you have in the morning, boys and girls? Well, if you said breakfast, you're correct. You always have breakfast in the morning. And as they say, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And it looks like as the lady is washing up, getting ready for the day, she's thinking about breakfast. What is she thinking about? Looks like she's thinking about pancakes. Who likes, who here likes pancakes? I mean, it's a matter of choice. Some people love pancakes. Some people don't like them as much. I mean, I myself prefer French toast, but I do like to eat pancakes as well. So let's see what happens. So she's getting dressed for the day and she's still thinking about eating pancakes. So it looks like she's going to get a book 
and that book that looks turns out to be a cookbook with a recipe for making pancakes. I don't know, has any of you helped your mom or dad cook before? Do you use a cookbook to help? If you do, that's many people use cookbooks to help to help with co the cooking. I still use cookbooks to help. <gasps> but do you can you take a look at the book and see what's in pancakes? Looks like there's a lot of ingredients. We have milk, we have butter, we have eggs, flour, baking powder, all that good stuff. Well, let's see what happens. So she's getting her materials ready. She's getting a bowl and a sifter. Now, in case you don't know, boys and girls, a sifter is something that breaks up the clumps in in food items. Like, have you seen flour, how it comes all clumpy and stuff when it's in the bag? Well, to get rid of those big clumps, you put it through a sifter. It breaks it all up. So, and then she's getting her flour ready and her baking powder, and then she's sifting the flour into the bowl. And then once that all happens, she goes to get her eggs, but, oh no, look what's happened. There's no eggs. Oh no. What is she going to do, boys and girls? What do you think? Think about it. Oh, it doesn't look like she has to worry. So she has on her winter clothes, and it looks like she's going to some type of barn. And in that little building is chickens. And what do you have when you have chickens? You have eggs. So she's getting her eggs. And once she has the amount of eggs she needs... She goes back to her house. So she has her eggs and she goes to get the milk, but uh oh. What's going on? It looks like she has milk, but not enough. So she's going out again. And it looks like she's going to, to the barn again, this time to a cow. And what do you have when you have cows? You have milk. So she got her bucket or her pail, went to the barn and is milking the cow. So after she has the amount of milk she needs, she goes back to her house, pours the milk in her milk jug. So now she has some milk. Then it looks like she's taking a little bit of that milk, placing it in a bowl, and then placing that bowl of milk into something called a churn. Now a churn is something that you use and it moves the milk around really fast. And if you move it fast enough, you get butter. So she's taking her churn and is turning some of that milk into butter.
So now she, ha she has her eggs, she has her milk, and she has her butter, but uh-oh. It looks like she's now out of maple syrup. Now that's a little bit harder to get from outside. Maple syrup doesn't come from animals, it comes from a tree. And trying to get maple syrup from a tree is a much harder task. Now she has a cat and a dog. I got a question. Would you leave your cat and dog alone with a house full of food? What do you think? I probably wouldn't. I would lock up my food before I left my house with my animals in it. But she's gone out before and it looks like they've been okay so far. So she's going, walking towards a nearby maple farm where she buys new maple syrup. Now it looks like she has everything, right boys and girls? So it looks like she can have her pancakes after all. So she's walking home and while she's walking she's thinking about how she's going to cook these pancakes to enjoy. Doesn't that sound yummy? Will she actually cook her pancakes? What do you think? Well, she goes home and, <gasps> uh-oh. It looks like her cat and dog didn't behave this time. There's food all over. We got flour all over the place, milk spilled all over the place, the eggs are broken. It's a mess. Looks like she's not going to have her pancakes after all. Isn't that sad? So it looks like she's very sad now. Bye bye pancakes. But wait. She smells something, and it smells like it's yummy. So she goes back out to the house next door, where it looks like the neighbors are cooking pancakes, and they're letting her eat some. It could be your neighbors, but it could be your parents as well. Who knows? It's your guess, boys and girls. And the lady goes home very full and very happy. And that is the end of the story. So, take a minute, boys and girls, to think of the lesson that was learned in today's story. All right, probably the lesson here is, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. The lady encountered a lot of problems in getting her pancakes, but did she give up? No, she didn't. She did whatever she could, and eventually she got her pancakes at the end. Great lesson, huh? That was, this was certainly a fun book. I hope you enjoyed it. But now, let's move on to our next book. We have our other book here called Bath Time for Biscuit. And it's part of the I Can Read series. Now the author for Bath Time for Biscuit is Alyssa Satin Cap Capusili. 
And the illustrator is Pat Chioris, and I hope I got that right. And the publisher is HarperCollins Publishers. Are we ready to begin? All right, here we go. Time for a bath biscuit. Woof, woof. Biscuit wants to play. So Biscuit just wants to play, but it's time for his bath. What will happen? Well, let's see what happens next. Oh, so he finished playing. Time for a bath, Biscuit. Woof, woof. Biscuit wants to dig. So it looks like he wants to dig holes now. Looks like he's trying to get out of the bath, right boys and girls? And if you keep if you memorize this, read it along with me. Time for a bath, Biscuit. Woof, woof. Biscuit wants to roll. So now he just wants to roll around. Ugh. Oh, it looks like his owner is stopping him. No escape. Time for a bath biscuit. Time to get nice and clean. Woof, woof. In you go. Woof. Biscuit does not want a bath. Looks like he's fighting it. Does your dog fight the water, boys and girls, when it's bath time? Probably, right? <laughs> oh, friends. Bow wow. Biscuit sees his friend Puddles. Woof woof. Biscuit wants to climb out. Oh, he's running away. Come back, Biscuit. Woof. And his friend is leaving too. Come back, Puddles. Bow wow. So it looks like they're both running away. Maybe they're chasing each other. Oop. So now they're playing. It looks like Biscuit doesn't want to get clean. He's getting dirty again. Biscuit and Puddles want to play in the sprinkler. And you can always use pictures to help you figure out words, boys and girls. Biscuit and Puddles want to dig in the mud. What a way to get dirty, huh, boys and girls? Biscuit and Puddles want to roll in the flower bed. Oh, it looks like they're getting caught. Now I have you. Oh, it looks like the owner got them. But they're fighting it. They don't want a bath. Woof, woof. Let go of the towel, Biscuit. Bow wow. Let go of the towel, Puddles. So they're fighting it. They think that she's playing. Ah. They definitely think she's playing. Silly puppies, let go. in the tub. <laughs> yeah.
time for a bath biscuit. Woof, woof. A bath for all of us. So it looks like they're both going to get in the tub now while Puddles walks away. And that is the end of the story. I certainly hope you had fun, boys and girls. I certainly enjoyed reading that. But was that a fun book? Have you guys ever had a dog that didn't want to, or a cat that didn't want to take a bath? I've had many of those pets. <laughs> they pretty much act the way Biscuit and Puddles were acting when it was bath time, huh? Yeah, the joys of having a pet. Well, in any event, I hope you had a great time with those books. I certainly enjoyed reading to you. But now it's time for me to show you a brief demonstration of a fun game. It's a cute little game that you could... You, and it helps you learn very simple three-letter words. And you can sound them out as well. So we ready? It's going to be a game called Scrambled Words. So give me one minute while I move the camera. All right, so before I begin, I just want to tell you that scrambled words is a night was a modified version of an activity from the website Reading Rockets. So if you're interested in this activity as well as similar activities, please click on the web link in the video description. But when you registered for your pro for this program, you should have received a craft kit. And it came with two with important pieces. You got the game board right here and 26 slips of paper with the lowercase letters A through Z. And the way you play is simple. Parents, what you do is and this should, you should also have, should have a list of three letter words that you could use, parents. So, what you do is you take three of the letters from the pile of letters. And you just scramble them all up. So we have G, B, and U. Now the goal is for your child to figure out which order they go in and then put them in, in the game board. So let's say your child puts them together like this. And then make the sounds. G, B, U. G, B. Does that make sense? No. So they try again. Maybe they do it like this. And it sounds like b g u b g. Does that make sense? No. So your child will try again. Maybe they do something like this, and then they can sound it out. G u b g u b g u b g u b. All right. Sounds. All right, but is that really a word? No, so they would try again. And then maybe they do something like this. And then they can sound it out. B, uh, g, b, uh, g, b, uh, g, bug. Does that make sense? They just spelled the word bug. So once they get it right, Give a lot of praise, congratulate them, say you just learned, you, you sounded out the word bug and you spelt it out. 
and then do let's then you could put three more letters up. So let's get three more letters out. So we have three letters out. And then they would figure out the process of what word that spells out. And let's say that we eventually get this word. Or your child eventually gets this word. Like at, k, at, k, at, k, at, cat. So they learn, they put together the word cat. And then what, then once that happens, you ha you do, you repeat it again, so forth. Now, just as a little side, this says t ak tack Okay. Could that be acceptable? Maybe. Like tic-tac-toe. I mean, you probably only see this in the word tic-tac-toe. But we could probably allow it. So let's try one more. Let's see if we can figure it out. So if we put them together as it is, we have t Does that make sense? Though, these two letters together actually make the sound. But we will do that for another time. We got this right here. T does that really make sense? No. Let's say we do something like this. Does that make sense? But what happens when we switch these two letters around? At at hat. Is that a word? Yes, it is. We spelt the word hat. And then you just keep repeating with as much of the, the words as you can, and as much as you and your child would like. And it's a fun way to remember your three letter words. And then in no time, your child will remember those three letter sight words. Which, if they memorize those words, it makes reading so much fun. But anyway, I certainly hope you enjoyed the game. I, sir, I definitely enjoyed showing it to you. And like, as always, there's going to be worksheets in the kit as well that you can complete at your own leisure. But it was great joining you boys and girls today. I am looking forward to next month's session. But until then, this is Miss Brienne saying take good care of yourselves. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.